Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make this cute little origami box and decorate it with watercolors and stamps from our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com and also use a coupon code origami to save 20% on your order of $10 or more of mounted stamps like these adorable little peg stamps we have here. Some of my kind of prototype things, just trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to go about making my little um, ocean scene gift box here. And this is just kind of the first one I folded up just to make sure that um, everything was going to work all right and we're going to do some neat watercolor effects this is just drawing paper I like to practice on whatever I have in front of me and kind of save my watercolor paper for when I actually do the project for real oh and I wanted to share with you I changed the way I'm storing my peg stamps this video is brought to you by rubber stamp tapestry you can find them online at pegstamps.com and my collection had grown quite a bit and I was using an acrylic organizer kind of like what um, people used to organize nail polish and makeup well I had this old drawer um, I had outgrown that and I did have another rack but I didn't have space to keep two racks full downstairs but I found this little plastic drawer from that I saved from a um, like a, just a little plastic organizer that had broke and this actually fits perfectly in one of my you know cheapy bookshelf you know $20 Target specials and um, so I just put made foam core dividers just hot glue and foam core and divided it up so I could put all my stamp sets in here and I have a little room to grow so um, I just wanted to share that with you because I know a lot of people said they had a hard time finding the rack that I had originally used to store my peg stamps okay so let's get on with the tutorial what I'm using here is a piece of 9x9 nine nine watercolor paper and this is the Canton XL watercolor paper and it's quite inexpensive you can find it um, in the 9x12 pads at pretty much any big box craft store for between five and ten dollars so you know really it's between 15 and 30 cents a sheet so it really doesn't make it much more expensive than regular cardstock so what I'm doing is putting just a long straight edge corner to corner like point to point I'll slide that up so you can see that a little bit better point to point and I'm just gonna draw a line okay and this is because I need to be able to mark my middle but I need it a little bit longer for lining up some folds so I'm putting one line like that and this is on the back side so we're not going to see this when we're done so don't worry about that and you can always erase it but you're really not going to see these lines so um, so it's totally fine all right so then what you're going to do is, uh, this is a basic origami box, you may have done these before, they're very handy, I use them for storage all the time in like my junk drawer and for little uh, peg stamp sets, like the little alphabet sets, I make tiny little boxes for those. So what you want to do is fold each point into the middle. Now watercolor paper is going to want to, uh, it's going to want to kind of crack on you, so what you want to do is have a bone folder handy and just smooth that out so you don't end up with any um, with any bumps okay so go all the way around and do this to every side Okay, once you've folded each of, the, each of those into the middle point, then you're going to fold each of these points to the point where that line intersects the other fold you just made. See, like that, and again, we're going to do the bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, you can use um, any sort of like smooth flat object like the back side of a butter knife, anything like that. You probably have things like that um, around your home that you can use. It really makes a big difference. Uh, especially since the uh, it's going to make the creases on the outside of our box look really nice. Whoops, I need to go. Yeah, to that one. Okay, so this is the basis of our box. I'm going to flip it over. So the areas that are going to show on our box will be this part here and these four areas. So I want to have kind of like a circular motif here. I want it to kind of almost look like a, I don't know, like a porthole or, or something in a, in a boat. I just thought the circular motif worked really well. So I'm just lining um, this little circle stencil template up. You can use whatever you want or trace a soup can. It really doesn't matter because you're just getting a light. You just want a light um, outline of a circle there. Okay, so now I'm just going to use a watercolor brush and if you don't have watercolors, what you can do is you can take your ink pads and, and press them onto an acrylic block or a piece of plastic and use that as ink. That's totally fine. 
I'll put a full supply list in the video description too so you can see um, all the products I'm using and you can see what stamp sets I'm using just so that you um, you have that. So I'm wetting the center here and then I'm going to pick up some different shades of watercolor. I just squirted out some watercolor here on this dish. It's actually a dish from the dollar store which I, I just thought it was really nice because it's um, because it's kind of square so I have a lot of mixing room and I can squeeze my paints up on the ledge and then they can just kind of hang out there and the, the mixes can wash down into the center. That's how I kind of like to work. The colors I'm using I'm using um, some phthalo blue, which is that nice, bright, almost turquoisey color. I do have some lemon yellow in there just to make a nice green. And I'm using some ultramarine blue. And after I use the ultramarine blue, I actually like to make a little bit of um, brown. So we can have kind of like a ocean floor color. So I take the uh, kind of orangey red color and I take some ultramarine blue and I just use that for a little bit of a brown. Grab a little more yellow if it's too dark. I don't want to get this super, super saturated because this isn't an expensive paper and it might buckle a little bit more but I do want to get um, I do want to get plenty of color on there. We're going to be stamping on top of this as well so I really don't want to have it too over the top. Now something I kind of like to do because it helps things granulate which means get that cool texture and it also just kind of um, disrupts things a bit. I like to just kind of squirt it and then sometimes I get some cool like dripping effects. That might be a little too much. If you spray a little too much, like I just did there, because I just wanted it to run out of the edges a little bit. If you spray a little too much, just blot it with a paper towel, and it's not a big deal. I think I do want a little bit more blue in there, though, a little bit more color, and I'm just going to add some of that to the edges and just let it flow. Okay, now I'm going to wet these uh, little edges here the four spots I told you you would be able to see. And then we can drip those, uh, any of those colors in there. I think I'll probably leave out the browns, probably just do like my um, nice bright phthalo blue. And then some of the greens. I love to watch a color go. You have to have the paint pretty wet for your colors to flow like that, especially on a, a student grade paper, which this is, but it's fine for this. I mean, we're making these boxes to like give gifts in. They're gonna cost us like 15 cents. This is a perfect use of that paper. So if you ever have like, if you buy watercolor paper and you're disappointed with how it works for painting, like this is not a great paper for, um, for doing really in-depth painting, it's wonderful for stamping and coloring with watercolors, but if you have to like go in there and work anything or lift a lot, it doesn't want to work as well. Um, so if you have a paper like that that you're not happy with for painting, use it for stamping, use it for gift packaging or making gift tags, because it's going to be a lot nicer than, um, than like the craft quality stuff a lot of times. Okay, so now I feel like that middle part might be a little too wet for this next portion. So I'm just going to blot a little bit off just by setting my paper towel in there and soaking up some excess. Now we're going to use rubbing alcohol and this is a little tricky because you have to catch your paper at just the right time. It can't be sopping wet and it can't be um, it can't be dry or it's not going to work. So you kind of need that. You need it needs to be uniformly wet but not like really puddly. So I'm going to practice on some of the side ones first because I feel like the center might be a little um, a little too wet. What I'm doing is I'm just using a little eyedropper, a little pipette, to pick up some just regular alcohol from my from my um, medicine cabinet, just 70% rubbing alcohol. And I'm just gonna drop little drops in here. And it gives a really cool texture that reminds me of bubbles. And I like it for this technique where we're gonna be stamping on top because it'll give us some lighter areas and that way our stamping will show through because I was designing this project and I was having kind of a, tr a tricky time because I tried stamping with bright inks and then embossing clear over them because I didn't have any really bright embossing powder and 
it was hard to kind of get things lined up and I wasn't really thrilled with how everything was going. And so I tried, and then I tried stamping with clear embossing powder and the watercoloring over it and using Copics on my, um, on, well, I'll show you right here on my background. This is where I stamped it in clear and then went over and colored it with Copics after I did my watercoloring. This is where I stamped it with the bright inks, then went over with clear embossing powder and then did the watercoloring. And this is was the watercoloring and then stamping it with the inks. And I actually like this the best. Um, so I thought if I did a little more with the alcohol, I could preserve some more white areas so I'd have a little bit more space to do my stamping and it would show up because I'd have the lighter areas. Because the alcohol goes in there and it um, it kind of pushes out the pigment or it dries up the area because alcohol has more, just dries quicker. So I think it just dries an area really quick and kind of shoves the pigment out of the way. I'm not 100% sure. It kind of acts similar to salt, but you get these, these really cool bubbles. So I'll bring that up so you can see that a little bit better. So fun. I just love this. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside because I have one that's already dry that we've got to this point already. And here we are with this right here. Um, I am going to start stamping on a motif and I've got a bunch of different nautical stamps here from Rubber Stamp Tapestry. And again, I will put a link to all these stamps um, in the video description. So I've got some turtles and seahorses and coral and um, starfish and sand dollars, so many things. They have so many beautiful nautical stamps. So if you like that motif, I definitely recommend you check them out. And I'm gonna start with some nice dark green sea turtles. I'm gonna do one big mama turtle. I think this is actually called Sea Turtle Mama. And I am gonna stamp her up there. Now this, uh, the Canton XL cold press, press paper is actually kind of smooth, so it stamps really well. If your paper is really bumpy, it's not gonna stamp very well. It'll skip over the edges. So when you're purchasing paper that you intend on stamping on, just kind of feel it. And if you don't have watercolor paper, you can do this on cardstock. Like this right here, I did on just r dr kids drawing paper. And um, this little box here, I didn't do the alcohol trick on this one, but this was just regular cardstock. So I was just testing it to see what I thought. So use what you have. Um, but if you do have the smooth watercolor paper, I definitely would recommend that. So now I'm going to go in with my baby sea turtle and I want to put a couple of these little sea turtles following mama. And maybe one, I like to turn it a little bit so they have a little bit of movement there. You could do more or less. I find it's a pretty safe bet to put things in groups of three. I also want some seahorses and I got a seahorse. I don't know if it's a mama or a daddy because seahorses, I think the, the dad does most of the, uh, the parenting in the seahorse life. So maybe we'll have a seahorse daddy over here and we'll have the seahorse bibbies um, kind of over here looking at daddy. Maybe one wandering. Maybe one up there. See, I'm trying to keep those in the um, in the lighter areas. And then um, I do like to keep a, a scrap of paper handy. I don't want anything to be too like perfectly masked looking, but I do want to be able to control not having anything outside of my circle. And I'm going to do this coral in red because I, I like that coral in red. I don't know if it'd normally be red or not. Um, and you do have registration marks to help you line it up, but I find this is a, this can go um, almost from any direction, I think. Just be careful not to get ink on the outside edges. I have a hard time with this particular stamp if I rock it at all. Um, and also having the paper there helps me not hit the edges in the core, in the, uh, in the ink. Okay. And then I'm not sure if I want any more of that. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do some of these grasses. You can also decorate the edges there too, if you want to because it's your box, you do whatever you want to do, whatever you feel like it needs. And... We'll go over here for one more. Just check your registration marks. It makes it really easy to make sure that your little grasses are going to come up where you want them. And I think I like that pretty well. I could fit a little sand dollar in there. I don't know if sand dollars would be that deep in the ocean, but what the heck, we can do it. It's our ocean. We can stamp whatever we want there. I'm not sure if that, I had to look for the glossy. If you're not sure if your, ink, your stamp pad's inked, just look and see if it looks glossy at all. There, I like that. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is make a couple cuts on our box and that's really easy. Um, you want to go in from, so have one of the points facing you 
Okay, the point's facing me. I'm gonna cut in past one cube and past two cubes. So I'm cutting right up to that big rectangle in the center. And then I'm gonna turn it opposite, completely opposite, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing from this side. And if you wanted to, you could stamp some more motifs on the edge of the box. I like the way that watercolor looks, so I'm just going to leave it, but you do whatever you want to do, which is, and if you have something you're not happy with, stamp a starfish on it. Nobody's going to know, which I think is the best thing. So I'm just going to touch that, and whoops, I already had ink on that hand, so I'm just going to see if everything's dry. I'm going to touch it with a fairly clean spot in my hand. We look to be pretty good. So now we're going to flip it over, so make sure, you know, obviously your table's clean if you're, when you do this, and then we are going to... Um, we're going to fold in the edges with flaps. So these edges have wings. See that? Wings. Those get folded in first. Okay. Fold Just fold those up so we know that's what we have here. Okay, then we're going to fold up like that and our little wings go in. Fold up like that, the little wings go in. And remember I said this box was nine inches by nine inches because it came from a nine by 12 pad. So that extra piece you can make a gift tag with or do your practicing on to see, you know, practice the techniques on that scrap piece that you'll have. It'll be like three inches by nine inches, plenty of room to practice. Then we're gonna fold in these two ends, kind of crease that unfolded part there. And see, this, the lines go away. We're left with a fairly good looking inside and there is our cute little box isn't that neat okay so you need a bottom for your box and um what i found is that if i take regular scrapbook paper and cut it eight and a half by eight and a half and fold that exact same way it fits perfectly inside of that for the bottom so there is a cute little gift box you can make and they're a lot of fun and i love this technique and i really encourage you to experiment with your products you may have a lot of bright embossing powders you may decide that you just want to stamp with clear ink and then use bright orange and bright green embossing powders I don't have those colors so this uh, this was me working with what I have you work with what you have and you come up with some really amazing ideas I know you can do it I hope you check out our sponsor rubber stamp tapestry you can find them at pegstamps.com and don't forget to use the coupon code origami to save 20% off your order of mounted stamps valuing $10 or more it can save you a lot of money especially if you are looking to stock up on some of these great designs thank you so much for watching until next time Happy crafting.